Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today's video is going to be a little different than what I would typically do, and that is I'm not going to channel a famous person. Not today. Today I'm going to have a conversation with my dad in the afterlife because he's in the afterlife and it's Father's Day. So some of you have, I gotta get comfortable here, you guys. I've, I've had so much anxiety. My anxiety has been off the charts lately. And so I was hoping that coming outside would really just help bring me some calm. It always does. That's the number one thing. If you have anxiety, go outside and go for a walk or be in nature or go sit by the river under a tree and bring your journal or bring your card decks, whatever listen to your you know music whatever just sit be outside it just really helps to just balance out the energies you know so i also did i will say that this week i did have another video that i've recorded like several weeks ago that i was going to share and given current events in the united states with all of the riots and the protests and the big movements that are that are really um, bringing up some really core issues, topics, specifically related to racism and social justice. And because of all that, that's really present and really amplified right now. I don't want to, um, I'm not going to share the channeling this week that I, I had scheduled. I think because I think it will stir the pot for people who are fans of this particular person and get them uh, feeling kind of upset, maybe, or, or feeling like they have to defend that person from the afterlife. And, and I don't want to do that to anybody because there's enough going on right now in our own values and belief systems that, and externally in the world, and this great momentum for change, which is awesome, but it's creating a lot of chaotic. Um, reevaluation and restructuring within us and our own beliefs and stuff and so I just I don't want to disrupt that for people you know and I like I said I have so much anxiety right now so much so much and I just think it would be better for me to I don't want to not do a channeling either either a couple of weeks ago I didn't do a share a channeling video I left and went out of town for a couple of days and and to answer your maybe obvious question is, well, Bridget, are you more anxious after, you know, because you live in Minnesota, because you live like 35 minutes from St. Paul or Minneapolis where um, the murder happened and uh, kind of the epicenter for all of the, the change that's now happening and the protests and things? Um, yeah, that's probably why it's been really, it had been, it's just been a, such a different time you know there's definitely and the best that way to describe it because words can't describe the energy of things it's just change you know and it's momentum for change which i personally feel is a very good thing but it also calls for us to be willing and open to participate ourselves not externally participate like you're not going to see me at a protest necessarily although you might have when we were going for a walk in town the other night I was so excited and so proud on the four corners of the one stop light town near us. Yeah, one stop light rural Minnesota town on the four corners. There were people with signs that said anti-racism, Black Lives Matter. And I just was like, oh my gosh. I mean, there were, I mean, I was so excited. I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm like beeping the horn when we drove by. And when I walked by, I'm like, thank you, thank you, you know, for doing that. And I'm like, in the meantime, I'm on a walk with my husband to get out of the house where there's chaos. So I didn't really feel like I wanted to join the protest at that point. And I thought, well, maybe later I'll go back in. Well, you know how that goes. I came home and then fed my entire family, made dinner and such. And so I didn't go and participate. But, but internally, it's a restructuring for all of us, questioning our own belief systems, questioning our behaviors, our thoughts, the way we act, the way we respond. It's like a reprogramming for me anyway. I think that's why there's anxiety because there's so much shifting and changing and I'm just letting it happen. I'm letting it happen because it needs to happen, you know? I'm grateful that I don't need a movement. 
you know, to make my life better, to make a change. I don't need a big movement because I have privilege. So that's what I'm saying about that. Okay, um, I'm gonna have a conversation with my dad. My dad was very political. If you've watched my video on Fairy Grasshopper, where I did like my 10 year anniversary of being psychic or um, subsequent videos on Above Life channel where I talked about my psychic story and how I got psychic and at least became aware of that I, the fact that I was, um, was after my dad's passing, when my dad died. Um, he passed away in 2002 in the summer and it's Father's Day today and I'm gonna channel him to have a conversation with him, but this is a really very spirit connected time for me in regards to that for myself, it's connected to my spirit during this time in the summer because we found out that he had AIDS like literally the weekend of Father's Day. I think it was right before Father's Day weekend. And then he got really sick and collapsed in right before the fourth of <clears throat> right before the fourth of July holiday. We were planning to have a picnic. Our family was gonna to get together and he collapsed and went into the hospital. I think it was July second. He went in the hospital and he never came back, never came home, and he died on August first. And so this time is a spiritly spirited connection time for me because of that, I think. And I have access to tap into more of my underlying emotions and feelings. And probably that's why the anxiety is high out here and the stuff going on in the world and the stuff inside of me that's saying, hey, I want to be cleared and healed too. My my emotions and energy want to be cleared and healed too. So let's let's jump into this change and let's really allow our own emotions to flow in our own grief process and how sad it is that it's all come to this place you know it's just i mean i can't even ugh, i can't even have an intellectual conversation about it because it's so emotional i feel so many emotions about all of it everything current events and 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 within myself too and it's easier to focus on externally when we're really feeling stuff internally. I mean, we're just coming off several months of being indoors all the time and trying to stay away from people and being afraid for our health and our lives and against this invisible thing, virus thing, and it's like this health crisis, but you can't see it. It's kind of like energy. You can't see it until it actually has the, the all the symptoms show up and until you're really sick it's that's kind of what like psychic and intuition stuff is like too energetically you can't really see it how the energy of something is affecting you until it manifests in fibromyalgia or liver disease or do you know what i mean it's like so there's so many layers of info here energetically so all right so dad i'm going to talk to you and and to answer maybe a question that's probably obvious to you is that you probably would ask me i would assume i would ask me if i were you um, well, don't you just talk to your dad all the time? I mean, you're, you're a medium or you're psychic. Why don't you just talk to your dad all the time? No, I don't. I don't because I don't really need to. Because you see, once, once our loved ones become spirit, it's almost like, like for me, I just feel so connected to him all the time. Like it's almost integrated within me. Like he's not separate from me anymore. It's, it's a different kind of energy relationship. Like I feel support. And only every once in a while, usually when I'm really in a state of deep change or I feel really on my own or alone or I'm for, I forget that I have a soul that's my spirit that's guiding me, when I forget that and I'm too human and not enough connected in body and spirit, that's when my dad will kind of show up, you know, I'll like kind of see his energy. Usually it's in the car. Usually it's in the car when I see him. Um, every once in a while he'll like say something or I'll get like a little message almost like a fortune cookie message and I'll see my dad's kind of face and then I know it's from my dad a reminder info whatever and after he passed so it's been since 2002 so that's a long time ago it's like 18 years it'll be this year and so that's a long time and so right after he died though, and for several years after, it was much more tangible than that. He felt much more separate, much more like he did when he was a person. And he still feels like that, still has a personality kind of like that. Um, but he doesn't like manifest like a spirit that I channel. He doesn't show up like that because he's just part of me. And I just, it's not separate, you know? So I just know he supports me. I don't, I don't need to really talk to him. But I thought it'd be cool to do that today for you guys. And I'm talking about a lot of different topics and I haven't even started channeling my dad. And you might not even be interested in this, but you might be. So 
above my channel. I mean, we pretty much can do whatever I want to do here, I guess. <laughs> Even though I try really hard to stay focused on just celebrities. I think you guys need to understand that I'm also a person and I've had loss and grief and that's how I started opening up to this. And so that too is how many of you have come to be clients of mine, have come here to watch this, to understand the connection in the afterlife and how things work. And, and to understand that it's spirit connection is really art and not a science. It's not exact. It's not very tangible and specific. It's more like that virus that's going around that you don't know you got it till you got it kind of a thing, right? Okay, dad, can you come close so that I can feel you? No, thanks. My dad, when he does manifest, he looks like he's been on vacation in Hawaii and he loved Hawaii. He only went once, I think, in his life, but he loved it, had the best time ever. Him and my mom and my aunt and uncle, they went and oh my gosh, he just had such a good time there. So I always see him in like these um, flowy pants that are like, uh, oh, what is that material? Linen, like khaki colored linen and like a, a shirt that's like that kind of too, but it's like, that linen color that khaki color linen but with white flowers on it so he just looks so like and he looks happy his face is round and his cheeks are rosy like happy like he has sun my dad is actually has darker skin than i do a little bit so but that doesn't take much i mean i'm very fair complected and so but dad dad tanned so that's cool my sister tans too she's so lucky so lucky she tans really nice my sister anyway all right. So I know my brother and sister will probably watch this video. <laughs> so, hey guys, dad's here, hey. Um, all right, so, hey, I'm gonna try really hard to have an authentic connection with you. So I'm gonna open my heart and so the connection come through really strongly. He says, there's a lot of disruption in the field, Bridget. It's not your fault. That's the first thing he says to me. There's a lot of disruption in the field. It's not your fault. I have had such a time, you guys, trying to channel. I have had such a time. I can't even, like, I'm not interested in it. I'm not, I'm annoyed. I feel like there's all this pressure on me or demand on me to, like, produce and perform and entertain and spin on my head. And, like, I'm a monkey in a circus and I'm not. I'm not an entertainer. That's not what Above Life Channel is. It's about connection and conversation and inspiring you and empowering you. And I, lately it's felt much more pressured. And that's because of the state that I'm in or the stage that I'm in. So he's saying there's a lot of disruption in the field. And what he means by that is that there is a lot of energy of change and chaotic energy. He says very, it's very dramatic, he says. He's saying it's really, it's really dramatic. Yeah, it's really drama. That's, that's why you're feeling this like need to perform. He said, that's why you're feeling that. And he said, there's a real sharp contrast going on. It's a very sharp distinction because it ha he says, things have to be obvious to people right now. It has to be real obvious. And you gotta know what you don't want so that you can go where you wanna go and go away from what you don't wanna be a part of anymore. He's like, you gotta just drop that old stuff and the stereotypes and all of it and step forward. You just gotta do it. He's like, there's no instruction manual. You're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna say things that, in ways that people will misinterpret and not understand. And you're gonna say things that are stupid and that's just the way it is. You're always gonna do that. If you didn't do anything, if you were afraid to do something, He's like, you channel who you want to channel. If you're afraid to do something or have a channeling session with somebody, that's on that's on you. That's you and your limitation on yourself. That's your self-doubt. That is nobody else's responsibility. That is your own individual choice. And if you can't deal with the backlash, then don't do it at all. Don't be doing any of it. Then you have no business doing any of it. Okay. So dad, give me some advice about channeling on Above Life Channel. Should I keep doing Above Life Channel channeling? It's been over two years now. I've got a lot of videos. People could just enjoy those forever if they want. And I really enjoy my channel, um, my Fairy Grasshopper channel because it's way more flexible for me. I feel like I can say whatever I want and I get to know people on there and people who love my work really I want to know me as a person, not just as a public figure person that channels. Um, are they're on there, you know, so I don't know how I what do you do? Would you have advice? He's like, ah, oh, bridge, you can do whatever you want to do. 
it's really nobody's business what you choose to do. It, it's, it's your business. What do you want? He says, if you want to take a break, take a break. If you need a break, take a break. He says, but I don't think you, I don't think you really want that. Yeah, I don't want to disconnect. I know that for a fact. That's why I keep like, ever since um, April, it's been really tough to just keep channeling, keep channeling. And there's a couple of times, that's why I've done people that I know really well, like Freddie Mercury or, and David Bowie haven't done for a while. I could do David. Or Louise Hay and Marilyn Monroe, people from the afterlife that I really feel connected to. It's really much easier to do those folks than it is to keep doing just new people that I'm really not feeling a bond with, you know? Just like right now, you guys, it would be hard for you to go out, socialize, and meet new people. I mean, I'm not in the mood to do that. I don't know if you're in the mood to do that. I'm not in the mood to do that. I can barely manage the relationships I have right now. So it's like the same thing. He's like, it's the same. He's like, you're just going through a time. He says, you're going through change. And, and that's, he's like, but that's natural. You don't have to do or die or ride or die or, which is so ironic that that's the, the ride or die. I'm doing it. Or I'm not doing it. I'm like, and that's how I am. He's like, Bridget, that's, you've always been like that ever since you were a little girl. I can do it. I can do it myself. I can do it. He says, you were always like that as a little girl, hands on hips. Like, I can do it. I can do it. But as soon as you get to a point where you feel like other people are telling you to do it, or it feels like they're demanding of you, well, you're not doing this, like it's not good enough, or it's not, you're not channeling enough, or you're not channeling the right people, or you're not channeling how I want you to channel, or you didn't ask the right questions, or whatever it is, because I feel that, and that happens. That happens all the time, though. That's really not that big a deal normally. It doesn't usually bother me as much as right now it does. <laughs> Clearly it does bother me. He's like, as soon as people push against you, you're like, I'm done, drop, mic drop, done, I'm done. He said, but it's not all or nothing. You've got to negotiate. You've got to move through this time in a way where you decide what keeps, what you keep, what stays, and what goes. You decide. Don't let other people force you into a position or situation where they are calling the shots. That's what happens when you just disconnect and walk away. That's what happens. Other people are determining your destiny, and that is not who you are. <laughs> That's not who you are. Don't do that. You will regret it 100%. The same thing happened in the, oh yeah, I don't know if I want to say that out loud, but I will. The Prince group. So you guys want to know some tea? Do you guys want to know some tea? I'll pretend I'm a drama channel for a little bit. There's a lot of that going on on YouTube this week. Oh my goodness. By the way, this is going to be a very long video. So stay if you want to stay. Pull up a chair, get comfy. And if you don't like it, then just wait till next week and see if I channel somebody else, <laughs> which I will. <laughs> I'm sure. You want to know the tea? So I have been doing psychic medium work since 2004. And after Prince died in 2016, in April, I had experiences where I was just really connected with him. I felt him. I don't know if it's because I'm here in Minnesota, not far from Paisley Park, or what the deal was. You can read all about that. I have a website devoted to that, thepurplemedium.com, where you can go and binge if you're a Prince fan, binge on the blog. There's a blog there. It's all free. All the blog stuff is free. Tons and tons and tons of afterlife conversations with Prince. Um, I wrote about my experiences, all that kind of stuff. And I really wasn't comfortable with just keeping those communications to myself. I just started recording the stuff that was coming through. It was all audio at first, because that's how I was doing all my work anyway. It was audio, like recording meditations and doing audios and teaching through audios and then and stuff like that. And so... I didn't know that I would actually share it with people. And then I decided that I had to because it felt like, even for a couple months, just to help people with healing, because there was so much of a gap with when Prince died and so many people opened up and had no idea they were never fans before and all of a sudden they were drawn to him and they couldn't understand why. And it was because he was like an opening. He was a an advocate or catalyst for a spirit awakening. And that happens when there's famous people that pass over because they have such great life on purpose energy where they lived their gift, their musical gift, their talent, or their advocacy if they were a public figure or leader or whatever. They lived 
their purpose. And we are so drawn to that because we struggle with trying to even know what our purpose is and how do we function and are we enough and all that. And so we're so, we admire that so much that when that person crosses over, there's this opening in us like, wait, there's this gap. Wait, I loved connecting to your, you connecting to your purpose so then I didn't have to connect to mine as much. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth, you guys. We, we use other people as our, not just our scapegoats to blame them for stuff, but we also use them to live our lives. Like that's what your relationships are about. You want those people to help you feel good about yourself. That's what your friends are about, right? I mean, really think about it, you guys. Underlying, there is that, some of that. I'm not saying that's the only way, some of that, but that's a truth, right? It is. And so when I did the Prince um, stuff, I, I started a Facebook group eventually after about six, eight months of doing it because people were just, I could feel the need to connect and communicate. So I just created that online and I hated Facebook groups. Oh my gosh, I hated them. I never hardly participated in them. I couldn't stand facilitating them because it just seemed like so much work for like not a lot of benefit like it was always one-sided I felt like I was always sharing stuff and then other people weren't really and so it's like I'm working my tail off and nobody else is contributing and it kind of felt one-sided for me anyway and that's a me thing that's because I'm an overgiver I'm an overgiver <laughs> for sure for sure and so when I did the Prince group I met some wonderful people that are now my purple friends for life, man. There's a good core group of people that I just love as humans that I'm so blessed with to call my friends. They're not clients, they're friends. And that's cool, <laughs> so cool. Some of them are clients too, actually. Yeah, some of them have sessions too, but friends, you know, like just sweet, wonderful, amazing, heartfelt people that are so supportive and kind and encouraging to everybody else and me and I just feel so blessed to have them in my life and you know who you are and yet then there was a whole subset of of energy on my group also that as it grew it kind of became this it kind of really became really entrenched in um it's kind of hard to explain this but it's almost like people put their own healing like their own pain not just the loss of Prince, but the, their own pain attached to that. And then all of a sudden they'd get really um, super obsessed about a Prince thing, a Prince story, or a Prince's relationship with Maite, or Prince's relationship with so-and-so, or Prince's relationship with this person, or, you know, they would get really focused on just pieces and parts instead of dealing with their own stuff. They wouldn't recognize, I think, that he was being a reflection to bring out their stuff to work on their stuff. So if it's a relationship thing that they had an issue with or they were all judgmental about or focused on, it's because in their life they have a relationship thing that they're very judgmental about or focused on or somebody's projecting that on them and they can't, they don't know how to heal it. And that's normal. Like I have those situations myself too. But you have to be willing to be in a state of awareness. And so I didn't, I felt a lot of pressure just to channel prints and I was doing it for free all the time and it was very stressful and then my, my work changed and I didn't have the same coaching clients I had before because I was doing so much print stuff and it was just, I felt such a pressure to keep doing stuff and it was really, um, it got to a point where it was not good for me to do that because I lost a lot of my business. I lost, and that's my income. And I lost, um, I lost myself a bit in that, I think. And so I had to, I closed the group and the people that I'm friends with are, I'll always be friends with, like I said, and we're still connected and stuff, but I cannot just focus on work for somebody else. And I didn't anticipate working for Prince for like the rest of my life either anyway. So it's been like four years. So it's about time to kind of not have to just work for one person. <laughs> he doesn't pay that well either. But he's very, uh, very good mentor and it's a good spear friend too. So, so what happened with the print stuff is I kind of lost myself and what's my purpose and what do I need to do? And I, instead I'm just responding to other people's needs. And so that's kind of with above life channel, I need to make sure that when I'm channeling somebody, it's an integrity where I'm in alignment. I'm doing it because I want to do it and it can, I can connect and I'm not, I'm not, I don't have this extra barrier of pressure. Like I have to ask the right questions or I have to 
to respond to these people's need. You know, there's a subset group of like Elvis fans or Freddie fans or Prince fans that are like, well, it'd be nice if you do this or it'd be nice if you do that. Well, why haven't you done this? And why haven't you done that? I'm like, because it's not, I'm not a restaurant. Like it's not made to order. Like you pay for this and I do that and here you go. It's not like that. That's not one of my life channels. Oh. But I still want people to be able to request, make requests and you know, because I, I do get inspired and need some questions from you guys, you know, so that, that works, that does work good. But lately I've definitely been feeling like the pressure to perform is what I'm going to say. And so I don't have that on Fairy Grasshopper channel at all. So it's definitely been, I'm not going to get back to what I, what I did with Prince. There's no way I'm ever going down that road again. When you work with a specific niche or a specific group of, of people, then that's that's only as big as you can grow and that's only as much, you can only go as much and, and evolve as much and help them as much as they're willing to help themselves too. And so it's better to have much more of a broader platform for connection for me anyway, so that I can help the people that are ready to do the work for themselves and to have the support instead of just question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. What does my guide say? Why, why um, is my husband cheating? People do ask me that kind of stuff in session. I'm like, I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not that. I don't know. It's weird. It's, it's, I'm like, deal. With, if you're asking the question, that's where you got to focus. <laughs> think about the questions you're asking you know it's like wow I mean it's really uh can be really tricky you know it's like I didn't sign up for that I don't want to break up marriages <laughs> you know that's just one example by the way not everybody is like that at all but Yeah, I'll answer that question too. My dad just said, why did you stop doing mediumship sessions? Hmm. Since that's what I do on Above Life Channel, I do mediumship, which is what, what communicating with the afterlife is, what communicating with dead people is, it's mediumship. And I stopped doing private sessions for that specifically because of the there's such a grief component and a healing component to that that I know how awesome it is to have some of those feelings of closure and things, but that's a lot of pressure to try to help somebody to get to a point where they can heal in one hour of one session. And usually that's the only time you talk to them and then they're gone. Like you never talk to them again, really. Cause all I want is one specific thing. And they're looking usually for one thing, one special detail and that's it. And if you don't say it that way, then it, you like crush their hopes for believing in the afterlife. And that's a lot of pressure. And I don't want that. People are very, very tangible, literal when they're thinking about their loved one they think about them as they were like you as you were in life and not you as you are now and it's different we are different when we're in spirit than we were as a human we feel different we evolve that's what happened with the prince group too he evolved and he kept ascending and i kept connecting to him communicating with them in a totally different way and people were like that doesn't sound like prince i'm like that's because you don't know him the way he is right now you expect him to be who he was in the past and that doesn't work very well you got to grow and evolve with them so, but I know that there's a very valid service in that, you know, and, and I know that I'm good at mediumship. I know that, but I just, it's a lot of pressure and a lot of stress. And, and I feel like there's a grief component and a healing component where that grief counseling needs to be there. And people that go through loss need to feel supported. They need connection. They need consistent long-term connection. And when somebody is coming to me because they lost someone, it feels really awkward to be like, hey, let's have multiple sessions because it seems like I'm taking advantage of them and I'm not. I'm trying to help them to heal and to keep growing and moving on and, you know, connecting for themselves and all that. And it's just really hard to discern that, you know, I'm not a used car salesman. I'm not a hearse chaser. I'm not anybody that is a used car system are totally fine you gotta make a living but that's just not I'm that's not the lane I swim in man and so and the one-time sessions just one and done kind of thing it's just not it's not very fulfilling for me as a coach like I really want to support people people deserve support long term too so that's why my psychic plus life coaching is both it's it's a really great way to 
bring up your spirit team and your own intuition and give give people opportunity, give you opportunity to connect for yourself. And in our experiences in our sessions and in between the sessions, then you have your own experiences. And then I'm saying, hey, so what have you learned or what's showing up for you? Let's talk about this. And I, then I can help identify, oh, well, this means this. How does that feel to you? Oh my gosh, exactly. That's exactly what it is. <gasps> I'm like, see, you're psychic. Look, you did it. Because <laughs> you are. Everybody is. Everybody has that capacity. But everybody's not a psychic for everybody else. It's just like I say, everybody can balance their checkbook. Well, most people they can balance their checkbook, but it doesn't mean you're going to be a certified public accountant and do people's taxes. <laughs> so it's kind of like that, right? So I just, it's, it's been, it's emotionally a lot of pressure for one hour and there's like this pressure to perform and get the person exactly what they need and then I would work longer like I'd have a longer session with people just to try to get that and then that's not fair to other clients that are paying the same amount of money and I'm talking to somebody for an hour and 20 minutes and versus an hour and it's not it's not right like I I want to make sure I'm very fair and so it just it was it was getting to the point where, and then people, like I would talk to some people and they would just be quiet the whole time and not say anything. And then they would be like, well, that's not, that doesn't sound like him or, well, why would you say that? Or I'm like, well, why would he? What's the, why would your dad show up like mine and say, I voted, have an I voted sticker on him? Why, why would that be? Oh, cause he was really active in politics. But why would he show up in the afterlife and that's the first thing he shows you, Bridget? That doesn't make sense. That doesn't mean a lot to me. I'm like, yeah, but it's identifying him. That's his vibe. That's how you would recognize him, right? But they're like, well, you know, it's like people's expectations and needs are like sometimes very big. And, and I just, I feel bad if I can't meet exactly where they're at. And then sometimes like I'll have a session with somebody and then like halfway through the session, I'll be like, oh, well, I wonder why my mom didn't show up. I'm like, what? We just talked to her for 20 minutes. Is that not your mom? But I think people's expectations, especially when you don't understand the psychic stuff or haven't had a reading or a session with anybody before, it's like they expect me to be like, okay, your dad's here. Here's what your father says. Make sure that you vote. You know, in our family, it was very important to do that. I'm going to show you a picture from when you were a little girl with your pink bonnet. Do you remember the doll you had? I'd like for you to tell your mother, blah, 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 and just be very specific. Like, I think they expect me to not talk like I normally talk. Like, I think there's an expectation sometimes that I'm like supposed to be like very serious and I'm not like I just have conversation and that's, but I'm, super connected and still psychic. I'm just not hamming it up for you. <laughs> I mean, why do that? Let's just have a conversation. So that's why I decided not to do mediumship specifically. And yeah, the reason why I don't channel famous people in the afterlife in private session is because I don't think it's right to do that. And from time to time there will be a guest like a spirit guide that comes in for somebody but when people want it so bad it won't happen because it's like and, and sometimes people are really kind of passive aggressive about it too with me in session they'll be like well why isn't so-and-so coming i'm like well if that's what you want maybe you should request that and then try to connect for yourself you know or i'll ask and see and but i'm not going to ask for here's my list of celebrities I want to talk to. No, it's not. I'm not like a tour bus in Hollywood. That's not, that's not, that's not the point. It's to inspire your spirit. He says, you feel very upset about this. I, I am because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings and I don't want to give the impression that I don't want to do sessions because I love sessions. I love my clients. Those of you who are my clients, you know how much I love you. I love you because you invest in yourself and are willing to show up and are willing to have these deeper conversations and you're open-hearted and open-minded and it is my pleasure to be in service to you and to remind you who you are and to oh gosh to bring up that energy even even when it's hard and to to sh sift through things with you it just it feels so it makes me feel so on purpose you know and I can do that as a psychic and as a coach. I can do that in all the tools that I have. And I'm so able to do that in my sessions, you know. 
doesn't mean I won't do one-time readings or sessions. I will, but not in a traditional psychic reading sense. So if you come with a list of questions and want answers, that's not me. It's about options. I will not predict your future because you create it. That's what I believe. That's what I believe. I don't think it's set in stone. And if you believe that I'm not a good fit for you and on Above Life channel, you shouldn't even be watching because that's not how I operate. And I just will probably make you mad. So I don't want to do that either. But living for other people's expectations and managing other people's expectations and needs is very difficult. And that's something that I have to learn more about and healthy boundaries and to just say no to people, even when they're nice, but they just don't know. And it just isn't a great fit. It, it's hard to do that sometimes, you know? And, and I'm, I'm a person that I mean, I know my value, but at the same time, I also know the value of a dollar. And I know, like for me, like I pay my coach $150 for an hour session with her. And I talk to her at least once a month, sometimes twice a month. And I'm also in a group a group with her for like 70 bucks a month. So I get it's an investment financially. And some months I feel like, oh, my God, did I get my money's worth? And the question isn't, did she show up for me? And do what I needed her to do. It's did I show up for me? And when I'm spending money, you damn well better bet I'm going to show up for me and I'm going to do the best job I can and do the best work I can and be willing to sift through some heavy stuff if I need to, but also to recognize my gifts and my value. And, you know, you get all the sides of it, the whole view. That's what I want. I don't want somebody that just gives me compliments the whole time and tells me how great I am and there's no substance or no depth. I mean, that's a, that's not what I'm paying for, you know? So I make sure I'm really aware of the value of a dollar. I am. I mean, I have a family of six, okay? And I have had sessions, you know, can't, people have to cancel their sessions and financial hardships on some of my clients and things like that. So I know that that's, that's tough, you know? I know. I know it's tough. So, boy, this is really personal. Do I even want to share this? Hey, Dad, what else do you got to say for me? He's like, be who you is, not who you ain't. That's a mentor for me, who's like a dad to me. In the afterlife, Red Turtle Bear, he's Native American medicine man. Um, and he's my son's, my youngest son's godfather. And so be who you is, not who you ain't, because that's what Mark would say, right? And my dad's like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's like, you have to be willing to participate. If you're not willing to participate, and don't even bother showing up, he said. You can't just carry a sign. You have to believe what you're carrying the sign for, you know? So he says, if you believe that your work is to inspire the spirit and that you want to give people hope, he says, I, I think you're doing it. I think you're doing it. And the pressure that, the extra pressure, Bridget, that you put on yourself is yours. Anybody that's watching you consistently knows the kind of person you are and you don't have to prove it and you don't have to explain it to people because they know. Oh, I'm going to cry. Yeah. And for some of those random folks that happen to click on this video and go, who the heck is this person and what's her channel about? This video is not what my channel is usually about. This video is what my fairy grasshopper channel is about. But I'm having a conversation with my dad on Father's Day from the afterlife and dad, I totally appreciate you being here. Do you have any words of advice for all of us? This is just crazy times, man. We've got a health crisis on top of a, a social justice crisis and massive change which i'm i gotta be honest i'm really excited about like when i feel it i'm like oh i'm so excited ah! you know but at the same time i'm like oh shi oh, oh my God. it's like it's killing me it is killing me all that's going on is killing me and i think that that's okay to say that because it, we're, we are slowly dying parts of us are dying you guys and dying is difficult to let go, right? The death process is about letting go. And there's parts of our old belief systems and old structures that are dying. And if we're really connected to them and trying to hold on to them, we are gonna feel like we're dying as they're dying. So we have to let go of them as quickly as we can, as productively as possible so that we can rejuvenate and come back to life and be more unified. Now that is awesome. That's the goodness, right? That's coming through it. Absolutely. He says, yeah, absolutely. 
Yep. So, so you have to understand that there's a lot of forces at work here. A lot, there's gonna be a lot of clashes and there's gonna be a lot of dysfunction. There'll be a lot more separation before there's unity again. And he says, in your own personal relationships, there's gonna be a lot of fighting and bickering and, and people not getting along because some people are gonna be willing to let go of those old structures and things. And some people are gonna be so scared to let go. You guys fear, yeah, I've been talking about that in session too. There's this, a lot of fear of the changes, even though we want change. For our own lives, it's it's scary because the change equals unknown, and that's where we're in right now. Everything's unknown, everything's up in the air. And while that's very, very scary not to have any kind of sense of like connection <laughs> and justice and and structure and security, at the same time, we are connected. We have that. We have that in Earth. We have that when we go on walks and feel Earth energy. We have the ability to see the sky and the colors and appreciate and connect in those ways energetically that just expands us in a way that helps our mind then be able to function, not even focus, because let's just be real. Focus is like out the window. It's about functioning, being able just to function. And if you can function, good on you, <laughs> because I'm telling you, it's not easy. And I know it. And I'm super authentic and sharing with you that it has been hard for me too. It has been. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to keep wrestling with and struggling too with my values and beliefs about meeting other people's needs and expectations and being the best I can be and judgment and triggers and criticism and um, feeling like it's not enough. No matter what I do, it's not enough. So why even try, you know? And I've said that out loud many times in my life, like when I was getting divorced, when I left a job and sometimes when I read my YouTube comments, I say the same thing. But then usually there's like 15 other comments for every one that's crappy or even not even crappy, but passive aggressive, which I can feel that, you know, for every, every one that I take personally, there's at least 15 that are like awesome. People are like, oh my gosh, this, this really stood out to me or, oh, I think this is so cool. And, oh, I really learned about this or, oh, I love that person. This is my favorite song. And it just triggers something in you when you're watching it and it feels good enough for you to like, that, that connection feels so good and it, it inspires your spirit, it brings it to the front enough where you type a comment. And that's so cool. Like, that's cool. That's the point. Like, that's the goodness. That's the inspire your spirit. Check the box. Check the box. Now we got to focus on the whole part. Hmm. How are we going to do that? Maybe we could add something to Above Life channel. That would be like, um, like something I did in the past, like my Sunday morning coffee sessions. I used to do those for my clients that were my membership group. I did a membership platform back in the day. That was a lot of work though. Holy mackinoli. But I had done that, been there, done that, had a podcast and all that. And so you won't find it on YouTube. I kept it on my membership channel, but, um, could do something like that again. That might be kind of interesting to do. That might be kind of inspiring. That might be focused on the whole part. I'll have to like be, let my, let that simmer a little bit so I can get inspired by you. So that's, that's just so, so, he's like, Georgia, that's so much who you are. That is who you are. That's so much you. That's you. He said, you were born that way. That's just how you were born. You were made with all that in you. <laughs> all that, all that hope. Uh, yeah. He says, yeah, absolutely. When I get an affirmation from somebody, I always use the word af absolutely. Like when it's a powerful, not just a yes, yes, but uh, absolutely means affirming. Yes. Even though my dad would never say the word absolutely. I say it because the energy comes through with a, yes, that's who you are. And he's like, absolutely. It's the energy like, yes, period, underlined. Whew. Oh my, oh my gosh, this is so long, this video. Okay, let's wrap up. I hope I've inspired your spirit a bit today. Filled you up a little bit with some hope maybe. I hope so. And at the very least, you've gotten to know me and I've put it all out there here on Above Life Channel, which is, I think, the first time I've actually done this kind of a video here. If you like these kind of videos, great. Go to Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube and follow my vlogging channel. And if you don't, don't worry, I probably won't do anything else like this for quite some time. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Make sure you subscribe to Above Life Channel if you do enjoy Above Life Channel. I really appreciate that. Thanks, you guys.
Oh, wait. Inspired your spirit, filled you with hope. Now what? Now what? It's your life. This is your life. So live it. Come on, you guys. Just live it. Thanks for watching.